Hello everyone, happy Sunday, new block Sunday for the Splendid Sampler Quilt Along. Thanks so much for being here tonight guys, and thanks replay viewers for watching, and hello YouTube viewers. Uh, YouTube viewers, if you'd like to watch live, you can join me in the chat live uh, by searching for penguin and fish on Periscope. Uh, thanks for coming in. Uh, I'm here every night at 9.30 p.m. Central, guys. All right. New block. Let's, I'm going to flip you around and we'll get going. Hey guys, thanks for coming in tonight. It is new block Sunday. We are working on uh, an embroidery tonight. You know, I printed this out and I was like, oh, that's right. There's embroidery in, in the Splendid Sampler. I feel like we haven't had a, an embroidery for a while. So here we are. Um, I'm going to trace this tonight. That's something I don't usually do. I usually use an embroidery stabilizer, but I thought I'd give tracing another, uh, go. It's just another quick, easy option. It's the easiest option, um, really, uh, if you don't want to buy any special stabilizers to print out, um, the design on is just to trace it. So we're going to do that. And it's block 75, which means we're three quarters of the way through the Splendid Sampler, which is crazy. Uh, if you're new here tonight, my name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery patterns and kits. I'm the author of Sew and Stitch Embroidery and a Fabric Designer, and I'm here every night at 9.30 p.m. Central. Uh, so I picked my fabric, and uh, we're ready to go. So I'm going to flip you guys around, and we'll get started. Okay. So here is my plan for this. I am going to, um, I think I'm going to use this cute white that I've been using um, with a little purple polka dot for my background. I thought that would just be kind of sweet. This is just such a sweet little pattern with all fun sewing stuff in it. I kind of love it. It's super cute. Um, so I just, I don't know if you guys saw, I did a little video a little while back of a, of a stop motion, not a stop motion, but a, what was that, a time lapse of me organizing all my embroidery floss. So I thought I'd bring out the blue box <laughs> since I have, um, I've been using a lot of blues in my, uh, in my, my quilt for the Splendid Sampler. So I kind of thought we would just grab a new one of these blues with every object. So like we'll um, do the hand and we'll just, ah, this blue looks good. And we'll do the ruler, a different blue and just different blues all throughout. I thought that might be kind of kind of a fun little deal to do. Something a little different, um, you know, just to, just to be doing something different every time we do the embroidery. Um, but look at all the pretty blues. I'm pretty excited. And then I have, uh, these are my old blues that I always used before, but now that I have all the new fancy blues organized, I'm, I'm set to work with those as well. Oh, I'm so excited. I haven't used any of them yet. So uh, first, I am going to uh, trace my design. So let's set those aside. So again, I'm using this cute little white fabric. So with a, a light white colored fabric like this, a lot of times you can trace right through. So I don't know, you can kind of see the design here. Um, you got 10 applicated blocks. Oh, okay, I'll say, holy cow, yeah. I would say that's definitely perfect for catch-up time. So, you know, you probably can't see all too well, but uh, I can kind of see. So I could start tracing through this and everything. Um, but if you have a light table or just taping, if you tape your design to a bright window and then uh, tape your fabric over it, then you'll be able to see the design a whole lot better. So to start out, I, I'm going to just cut a chunk out of this white fabric. Um, I'm just going to go here. All I need is for it to be bigger than the six and a half inches, really, um, which is the size of our block. But I'm going to cut it, you know, a bit bigger than that because I want it to fit in my hoop without me having to move the hoop around every single time I have to, um, you know, stitch an area that doesn't fit within the hoop. And it's just... It's just easier, so I'm erring on the side of cutting a piece that's a little bigger. And I didn't use a ruler or anything, that's fine. So here's my piece to start out with. 
Nope, no sticky Fabri-Sol this time. I thought I'd do something different. So what I usually do is I, let's see, I think I have some here. I usually, uh, I usually use sticky Fabri-Sol which is printable, so it prints, and then you can stick it. Uh, after you print it out on a, a sheet of this, you can stick the design like a sticker directly onto your fabric and stitch through it. But this time I thought I'd do something a little different. If you do want to give that a try, it's um, by Sulky is the brand, and it's Sticky Fabri Selfie, and we sell it in the shop at penguinandfish.com. But I thought we'd do, we try it the old-fashioned way, which is straight up just tracing it. And uh, I'm going to trace it with a water-soluble marker, just because I can, um, when we're done with the embroidery, you can just with a, a wet ray kind of dab all the marks away. But you could just literally use like a pencil too. I mean, it doesn't need to be all that special. You got some stitch and wash to use. Oh, it isn't sticky to the fabric. Oh, stitch and wash. So it's so, you got like a embroidery stabilizer and stabilizers just in general. There's two things that you really have to look at. How it goes on and how it comes off. So if it doesn't say that it's sticky or stick on or anything like that, then it doesn't stick. Um, so you will have to baste it or something like that. Uh, and then the other way is, um, you know, how it comes off. Um, so it can come off with water. It can come off by being able to be torn off. Um, but those are the two items when you're going down that crazy aisle with tons of stuff. Um, that's what to look for. Yeah, basting it should be just fine. Um, you just have to look at how does it come off. And it should say somewhere there. But, but that's the thing. How does it go on? How does it come off? The two things uh, when you're down that big old aisle, uh, what to look for. Um, as the main the main two things and it just sort of depends on what fabric you use sometimes you um, You might want the tear away versus the, the the wash away because it might be a fabric that doesn't do well with water You know what I mean? Um, so oh It dissolves in water. Okay, so yeah um, In theory you should just be able to baste it on and you should be just fine. So I have a, a light table So this is my um, little light table. It's actually like a little dentist um, thing for x-rays, I think. But I'm going to lay this on top. Again, if you have a sunny window, there we go. So see, now you can see it, the design through just so much better. So again, you know, if I didn't have the light table, I would throw this up on a window during the day and I could use a pencil, which is just fine. With a pencil, you can kind of erase it a little bit when you're done. But, um, you know, you're going to be stitching over it anyway, so it'll be covered up, even if you leave the pencil. Um, I'm going to use my water soluble marker, so we're just going to hang out and draw. So the reason I kind of like, um, I like using the embroidery stabilizer, that sticky Fabri-Sol because I get to kind of skip this step. <laughs> but this is... The most typical and really cheapest and easiest way to still do this is just to trace the design and that's what we're going to do. It's just going to take a little bit extra time. The benefit of this is that you're not stitching through that Fabri-Solvy. I know some people have said that it, it makes their needle a little gummy. Um, or it's, uh, you know, I don't know, it's just an extra layer to stitch through, but I don't know, I still kind of love it. It's so easy to just print it out right on your printer and do it. I, I'm not using it tonight, just to, just to show you guys a different way of doing it. Um, again, this is the easiest, cheapest way to do it. I don't know about easiest, I still think the Fabri-Sol is easiest once you have it, because you just print it out, but, um, but it's still... It's still nice to do. So we can just check, I'll just check it by turning the um, light table off. There, so you can see see the lines starting to come through there. And the fabric selfie is a little more accurate and stuff. But you know, this is an option to, um, 
another thing that I use sometimes is uh, carbon paper or dressmaker's carbon paper. Um, that works really well if you're trying to stitch, a, stitch onto a dark colored fabric and you're not using a, a embroidery stabilizer like Sticky Fabricelli. Um, you know, it comes in lighter colors and stuff, so you can do it on, you can do like a yellow carbon paper onto, onto, um, onto a dark color. Oh, uh, I've had this light table for a long time. My dad's a dentist, so he, I think, got it at some dentist trade show a long time ago, but, but they are pretty available. Um, they're pretty available in craft stores now, or like art stores. It's, it's a light table. So, um, just look like at an art store, uh, for a light table or tracing table. And it, you know, some are cheap and some are expensive, but all, you know, all you really need is, um, if you have like a glass table or something like that and you throw a light underneath it, that will totally work too. Like a little, just put a lamp underneath. Um, and again, you, um, a light window would totally work. I've um, heard of people doing it on their iPad, although that kind of scares me. <laughs> um, but anything just that has a little bit of light to project. Um, I'm going to stitch it in a all blue, but all sorts of different colors of blue. So... I think I'm going to do every element in the design. I'm going to do a different blue. And uh, in the design, oh, is there a line there? I'm going to just peek underneath. Oh, no, that's just a shadow. Oh, thanks for coming. Coming in tonight. I guess it's probably morning by you. Um, so right here where it has all these, uh, this running stitch, I don't know if you guys can see, but it is that little heart is a cute running stitch. I'm not going to draw uh, all, all those lines in. I'm going to just fill it in with a line here just because it's quicker to trace. And I will have the pattern right next to me so I can just double check and be like, oh yeah, I got to remember that that heart is a, a running stitch, not a solid line. So in the instructions, they said to use... Um, one strand of 12 weight orofill, which is that thicker, that thicker thread that we've used a couple times. I think I'm going to use two strands of embroidery floss again, or instead. Oh, variegated would look super cool. I was thinking about using variegated. We've, we've done that a, a couple times using the variegated floss. Um, but I kind of didn't think, I don't have too much of the variegated on one of those skeins like I think there's only five meters or something instead of the eight or something like that I don't know on on those skeins so I kind of didn't think I'd have enough and then I remembered I had all the blues so I thought I'd just uh do that instead different blues for each thing but yeah so we're gonna I think we we did a little comparison on the thickness of stitches uh, a while back, like we compared what Orofil 12 weight is compared to the thickness of one strand of floss and two strands of floss and, you know, all the way through six strands of floss. And I think two strands was pretty close uh, to the 12 weight Orofil. So I thought we'd do two strands, which is a little thinner than I normally do, but there's a lot of cute little details in this. So um, I think two strands will be cute. Oh, someone asked earlier, this is a, um, a oh, you can't see because of the light. It's a water erasable fabric marking pen or a water, water soluble marker. Um, and, and it's, it's the, the blue version. And those are at all, pretty much every craft store, I'm thinking. It oh, comes off in water. So when we're done, I'll... Uh, I just, I just get a, a rag really damp and then I, um, um, you know, squish it around and get things wet. Yep. I'm using a little light, light table, light box. 
here. Um, if I didn't have that, I would totally just tape this to a window and do it on a on a window. But here, I'll show you how far I am. So see, now we, we got uh, all this blue on. It looks like I got to draw up here a little bit better. Um, one thing that I didn't do, which probably would have been smart, um, is to get some like double-sided tape or something and, and tape this, uh, or I don't need double-sided tape, but I could have taped some of um, the edges of this to the paper um, to keep it from moving around when I, when I draw. Like I gotta keep making sure that, you know, when, I, when I'm drawing down here, everything that I drew up here is still lined up. So it's something to keep your eye on. All right, again here, I'm gonna just draw a line down here. I'm not gonna draw all of those blanket stitches. And then I'll just look at the design and um, and just be like, oh yeah, that's a blanket stitch. Because that's just a lot of work to, to draw in all those little lines. I mean, this is just kind of my guide. Um, no reason really. I just thought I'd try something different. Um, what the, you know, why I'm not doing um, the sticky fabric selfie. I've been doing that a, a lot. And I'm like, you know what? I don't think I've done, or maybe I have, I don't know. Just traced it before. And you know, there is, there is something a little satisfying about tracing it on too. I don't know. Feels, I feel like relaxed right now. <laughs> I'm not quite sure why. Um, usually this is my like least favorite part. I am going to draw all these on. I probably wouldn't need to draw all these little um, like fly stitch guys on, but I don't know. I'm doing it. I feel like um, I would need these more of a guide as a guide for me to know where to put the stitches than I would need these for a blanket stitch. But I think maybe that's just because I do blanket stitch a whole lot more than I do like these little stitches here. Okay, so this this heart, I'm just gonna draw a solid line again instead of the running stitch. But yeah, so I mean, this clearly is not faster <laughs> than, than the sticky fabric salty that I can just print straight from my printer and be done, right? So, but it's another option. All right, a little line here. These cute little V's on it. Oh, I think there's a little dot in there too. Little French knots hiding out by these V's. All right, some crisscrossy something. All right, again here, it's a running stitch, you know, which is like a dashed line. I'm gonna just draw a solid line so I don't have to draw out all those tiny stitches. Oh, those line up with these lines here. Probably just takes as long. Yeah, you know, that's kind of true. So, um, well, so you, when you are done with the sticky fabric solving, you do have to dissolve it uh, in water. So you have your, I always, uh, you can run it just underwater. That's what I do if, if I'm just doing it myself. But how I've been doing it uh, with you guys is I just have uh, two big bowls of water, a clean bowl uh, or a bowl. They're both clean, but once um, the um, fabric solving likes to uh, flake off, is how it comes off. Actually, it, it, it's also been coming off lately as kind of a goo, and that's, I'm not really liking that. Um, I don't know if they changed their formula or if I just got like a kind of a funny batch or something, but it either will flake off or it'll come off in like a goo. And uh, once the first water gets just too dirty, then I'll put it in the, in the fresher water. But if I'm not doing that, then I will um, just run it over water. Okay, so here's a bunch of chain stitches. Again, I'm just gonna draw a straight line. Uh, this is a cute little burst of stitches. Don't like this line either. Oh, so you you got this line too. So I'm, you know what? I haven't written them yet, but I'm I'm gonna write sulky and ask if that's a new formula or something because I'm not a huge fan of that either. The the like snotty version of it where it's just like slimy. And if that's how it's gonna be from here on out, I'm not sure if I will keep using it, honestly. Um, because it's a little difficult. Like I liked it flaking off 
because I could see where it was and where it wasn't. And with the goo, it's hard to tell where it is. Sometimes I feel like doodling. Oh, like this. Uh, yeah, so th this is a fun, fun um, thing with uh, just tracing like this. You can add lots of other things to it. Well, I suppose you could do that with the fabric slowly too. Um, just draw on extra little doodads with the pencil. Um, this, this light table, uh, you can get them from, not this particular one, but light tables are becoming a little bit more popular now, so you can find them at, um, I don't know if I need to draw all these lines in. I'm going to skip drawing the lines in, but I'll have to remember that they're there. You can get them at art stores. You have a hard time with French knots? I'm hoping to do a video coming up on, on French knots, but I'll show you uh, for sure. Once we get to all these French knots, I'll go through the process. There's like kind of three things that are the usual mishaps to a French knot. Um, so we'll go through those when we, when we get that far. What are we tracing onto? My fabric? It's that purple and white fabric. Uh, I don't offhand. I know there's some cheaper ones and some more expensive ones, but Oh, you know, another thing I was saying, um, you could, uh, like, if you have a glass table, you can also do this if you have a Pyrex, you know, bake cooking, like a baking Pyrex thing. If you just throw that on some light, uh, like, if you have, a, like, a little lamp or something, you could trace it on there, too. You don't, oh, just, oh, 30. Okay, so that's not too bad. So they have them at Joann's. Okay, I, I wasn't sure about that. Um... I know I've seen them in art stores and stuff, but yeah, Joann's. But yeah, if you find anything glassy or whatever in your house that you can put a light behind, that will totally do the job. Just tape it to that. But if you're going to do all that, then you might as well just put it to a, a sunny window too and and just trace it that way. It's, it's fine. Yep, DIY. <laughs> yeah, you can have your own little little area. I know if you guys have an Ikea, I know that some people get those big glass tables and put a light underneath it. Ooh, you're like, oh, okay, well, there you go. That's a fantastic idea. If you have one of those sewing tables that are that acrylic um, um, sewing table, throwing your um, light, yep, you can do that for a cell phone, anything where you um, have, uh, you can do a glass surface, like a, a Pyrex with your phone underneath, that would totally work. Um, so there, it is, it's just down and dirty, quick and easy um, way to do it. So here we are, I think we've got that traced. So I think we did a pretty good, pretty good job here. I mean, it is pretty busy. I think this would be able to, we'd be able to see it better if we did use the Fabrisolvi. But again, it's, it's gonna do the job just fine. Uh, and I, and I remember you always have your, your, uh, actual design your pattern as a reference so I'll always be able to go back and be like oh yeah that's um a running stitch or a blanket stitch and if, if something looks compute confusing on here I'd be I can be like oh yeah those are two lines there and I can always just go back and draw it in so that's it for the light table um I think this is gonna be so cute so I have this this hoop. This is actually a little smaller hoop. I'll use this tonight. Um, I think this is a seven inch hoop. I'm, I typically, I, this is what I've been using here on Periscope just because it's close to being here, but um, usually in my kits and stuff and, and what I have, I actually have like tons and tons and tons and tons of these, but I have a um, eight inch hoop. That's what I typically use and I'll probably switch to that for for this, but let's, let's get a little stitching done tonight. Um, I won't keep you guys forever, but we'll we'll do this. I want to do the cute little hand motif first. So I am just going to plop my hoop on there. And uh, I'll move the hoop over to do this kind of little sampler area later. I'm going to start straight up with the hand. I know, isn't this cute? I think it's just adorable too. Oh, there we go. Cute, 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 cute. So I, I put it in the hoop just putting the, uh, the inner hoop down on the table, then putting the fabric over the inner hoop, and then putting the outer hoop over. And I'm going to, uh, I'm not really stretching the fabric, I'm just making sure that it's not 
slack really in any areas. And it still feels like it's not evenly placed. But I think, I think that's probably good enough. So I'm going to tighten the hoop the rest of the way. And let's pick a blue. And I don't think I'm going to even pick all my blues as I um, right off the bat. I'm going to just pick um, and then do it. So, all right, let's get my new cute pretty blues. So we could almost just grab one and that will be our starting point. So this will be, um, you know, it kind of does feel good to embroider. Like I was saying earlier, when I opened the, the website today and saw that it was embroidery, it hit me. I'm like, oh yeah, there's embroidery in here. I feel like we haven't done it in a while, which is just kind of funny. I think what, what the thing is, is uh, last time um, it, oh, you got my book. Oh, yay, that's exciting. That's super exciting. <laughs> I think the last time we had embroidery, though, I think I could only work on it one day or something. So, all right, I'm going to, let's just grab this cute little, like, periwinkle blue. That's, that's our starter one. Oh, thanks so much. I'm so happy you like it. Um, let me know if you have any questions about it or, or anything like that. But yeah, I, I do have some variegated blues. I thought we'd just do the solid blues tonight. These are my, my new, um, well, they're actually not new, new, but I, I've, um, I, these are the ones that I just organized recently. I haven't, uh, haven't played with these ones in, like at all yet. So these are Cosmo, Cosmo flosses, um, by Lycian, uh, Cosmo floss. So it's a little, uh, it's a little, it feels a little softer maybe than, than DMC floss. Uh, and they, they just have tons of colors too. So I have a, I have a lot of colors. I don't know if I have all of them, but so I'm going to pull just two strands out of here. So I'm going to just, I'm going to do two strands at a time. I'm going to do it the way where I just, uh, pull one strand of floss at a time. That seems to be, that's the way I've been doing it lately and it just seems quick and easy. So there's the second piece. Ooh, a spectrum of color. Ooh, this would like, this would be so cute with like a rainbow of colors. I'm kind of doing the rainbow of blues is kind of, <laughs> kind of how I, how I see it a little bit. Ooh, anchor thread. That's another really nice brand of thread. Um, I think the 12, we did a little test and I believe, um, I don't have it in front of me, but I think the 12, uh, two strands was closest to the 12 weight, I believe. Um, I will, I will check that out again. I know I have the little sample somewhere. Ombre blues, exactly. That's, that's what we're doing. So I just have a little piece here because, uh, just like a 24 inch, maybe not even, this might be just 18 inch piece, uh, which will mean I have to change, uh, change it more often, but I'm, I don't want to waste all my, my, um, blues. So, okay. Let's start with the hand. I got my embroidery needle here. I'll start with the whole away knot thing again. Let's see. So, okay, just to look at the pattern again. Stitch however you want, um, but how she says is to do all solid lines. Oh, this is by Kathy Schmitz, by the way. I don't think I said who the designer was. Stitch Crazy by Kathy Schmitz. But Kathy says to, uh, for all the solid lines, they should be um, a stem stitch. And uh, so we'll do a stem stitch, which is great because I don't often do a stem stitch. So it'll be good practice for me um, just to get in the habit of the stem stitch. And um, then the leaf stitch and, uh, or the leaf, the leaf veins which are right here, and the scissors screw, um, just a tiny little bit there. Maybe maybe this around the around the thing too. Um, will be backstitch. So I think that's just because you know this is just a straight little area. Little they're just small areas. So I think that's easier with the backstitch. So all right, let's give stem stitch a try. Like I said, I don't do this all that often. I'm gonna start an away knot here. I know, I can't believe this is block, 
block 40 or block 75 either. Okay, I just wanted to see this because I drew a line and I wanted to make sure that this wasn't part of the arm. But no, this is just like that little silver thing. Oh, I am using two strands because I think it's pretty close to the the um, Orofil 12 weight. That circle in the scissors, a little hex stitch. What do you mean, like a little hexagon? I guess I don't. I don't quite know what a, I don't know what a hex stitch is. Probably one of those cool stitches. So for a, a stem stitch, it, um, all you're doing is let's see if I can get a little closer here. I know it's a little hard to see. Oh, like a little yeah, like I did on the eye. So lots of times when I do circles like this, you know, we have this little circle. Um, a lot of times for a circle, I'll just do like a little. I guess kind of octagon shape. Oh wait, no, I'll do like a hexagon. Yeah, I'll uh, do like a flat top and then side side, flat bottom and side side. I'll do that a lot of times for for circles. So for a stem stitch, uh, we're starting at the beginning of our line. We're just gonna go up here, and I'm uh, um, for my first stitch. I'm gonna go a little lower than the line, so just off of the line. And then I'm going to come back up right away on, on the line. So I went from a little off the line to on the line. And these are going to be little stitches, but we'll see how it goes. And again, I'm going to go a hair off the line, a hair below. And then I'm going to come up right where my, right next to my last stitch, but on the line again. So it's just a hair above that last stitch. And you always want to have like your thread down down here. So again, just a hair off the line, hair below, and then back on the line, but right next to the last stitch. Oops, pulled that one a little bit. There we go. So a hair off and then back on. Oh, yeah, we've used this dotty fabric before. I don't use it, I haven't used it that often just because I'm trying to do a lot of blues and not a ton of this white fabric. Um, but we've used it here and there. Not really as a main main piece like this, I think. Not, not as a main background. It's gonna kind of look like <laughs> this hand has like purple measles or something, but oh well. I think I'm getting bigger with my stitches as I go, but here we here we are. You can kind of see what it looks like. There are little diagonal stitches that are that are next to each other there. The yeah, zombie pox. <laughs> so just cruising up the side of this hand, and a, a stem stitch. The reason I, I had a lot of trouble with stem stitch for a while, and the reason was is that I am not usually an embroiderer who goes down and then up in the same motion like this. So it was really difficult for me because I was going straight down, like I was going all the way through with my needle. Um, I'm not going to do it here because I don't want to pull it out. And then I was trying to come back up in the right spot after I had already pulled this stitch flat. And it, it was really hard to get my needle in the right spot. So the trick really is for a stem stitch to go down and up in the same, at the same time, and then leaving, having this loop underneath, um, and then pulling, pulling your stitch and not, not doing the stab down and then, then pulling up. It's doing it the, in, in the same motion like this. Then after that, after I figured that out, I'm like, oh, okay, stem stitch, I got it. So, all right, to finish, I'm just going to do, to give it that effect of the two stitches, I'm going to do um, the last stitch. Instead of just stopping there, I'm going to continue with, you know, coming back down there and then to the where the last stitch was and then just doing a final one like that. Then we can have, like, the same thickness. I maybe should have done that down here, too, but... All right, so I'm going to jump to this little thumb area. Um, when you are working on an embroidery, at least I've kind of found this, uh, when you're 
doing it in the way where you're going down and then up right away. I find that if your fabric's a little looser in the hoop, that works a little easier. And we're getting closer to the hoop edge now, so I'm having a little trouble going down and up. So this is a pretty tight curve for a stem stitch. For I, I found that a stem stitch doesn't go around curves all that easily, so I'm going to just reduce the size of my stitches a little bit and see. Usually if you make the size of the stitches a little bit smaller, um, you get the effect of a curve a little bit better. We'll see how I do here. I think it's going to look a little wonky, but oh well. Stem stitch has a kind of look to it too though, so it's going to just have that stem stitch look. I can push them up a little. I think we'll get two more in here. Nah, we're going to jump all the way to here. All right, so there's our little thumb. The nice thing about stem stitches is that it does go really quick. I mean, we're, we're already this far. If we were doing back stitch, we wouldn't be this far on it. And um, stem stitch, it gives your thread like a double thickness look. So if we were to do this in a back stitch, to get this thickness, we would have to use like four strands of floss. Because a stem stitch is, you know, these diagonal lines next to each other. So it's almost like you have, instead of two strands for each stitch, you have like four strands that are hanging out next to each other. So that's what gives it its extra thickness because we're kind of overlapping our stitches a little bit with that diagonal. Um, so I just enough thread, I think, to do a little bit more here. So if you do want to do a different stitch than the stem stitch, just keep that in mind that um, you may want to use a little bit more strands of floss just because this does give an extra thickness. Here we have a little inside curve going. I think I'm gonna have just enough floss to make it here. Yeah, two more little stitches. So it's probably a little easier for you guys to, to see if I was using the fabric selfie too because we have that nice bold lines, but we're making it work. It's fun to do it different ways. So I'm going to just pull it down for the last stitch. And there we go. We got a little hand going here. So now I'm going to just uh, weave in that end to the back here. Uh, instead of tying a knot, I like uh, weaving in the ends. For me, I always catch my thread on needles. I don't have to wait for the end result. When finished with floss, do you start? Um, I used to, but now what I do instead is I just weave it in where I left off. Um, because there's smart people here that told me to do that instead. I'm like, oh, that makes so much sense. Um, so no, I'm going to just weave it in right here to stitches I already have. Uh, and then I'm going to start. Uh, I did the way not here just because I don't have any other stitches to kind of weave it in. Yeah, no, oh yeah, it's, well, I still have to, I still have to wash, not wash, but I still have to dab out all the lines, so I still do have to. There's still a little step left, but, so I cut off that knot um, that was holding this away knot here. Oh, yeah, so I saw that. I haven't, um, I've been, like, really away from my email for the fun for the last few days, um, Arja had found, uh, 
a Singer sewing table on eBay, and because I had been talking about um, a table. I think my table, I do have a table, but someone converted it to a butcher block top. But I looked underneath it, and I think the original table, I think they might have just uh, screwed it onto the original table. Oh, yeah, so I think it was in Wisconsin, which is really close. <laughs> So I definitely will uh, check that out for sure. Uh, but first I gotta see if I can actually screw off this this table, the butcher block. Cause I wanna take, um, I have uh, my husband's, there we go, his uh, grandma's sewing machine, singer's sewing machine there. And I wanna convert it uh, back to a treadle sewing machine. So I was looking for a table and I have a, I have the base for it. I just don't have, um, well, I have the table. It's just got a push of blocks that someone threw on the top of it. So I got to just check that out. All right, there we go. So I wove it in back and forth a few times. We'll snip the end off. I can snip it close to the stitches. And there, we have no knots on the back. Um, so when I'm pulling the floss through, it's not going to get caught and any knot hanging out. And it just gives it a nice, super clean back by weaving in the ends. So it almost looks like a little back stitch on the back, the, the stem stitch. But here we go. Here's the start of our stem stitch. Um, I'm going to get another one going here. Let's uh, get a little loose in the hoop here. Let's just get a good base again. All right. Let's get another one going. We'll get started on that. So I'm going to just pull two more strands out of here. So just pulling one or just grabbing one strand and pulling it, um, pinching it in between my fingers here, the, the floss, and then just grabbing the one strand and it all bunch up like it's going to go in a crazy knot, but it's not. And then it just releases all nice. Oh, that's true. So that's kind of what I'm, what I'm, thinking would be like super awesome. Yeah, I would love to get it up and running. I need to find a spot for it yet too. But yeah, it was so fun to use it the, the, while my other machine was in the shop and I, I would love just the treadle. I'd love it to be just like a, you know, like a focal piece in the living room sort of thing. And you know, people could go sit on it and, and use the treadle or whatever. I think would be pretty fun. Um, so yeah, it's on the list. Maybe, maybe for Christmas, I'll figure that out. Um, all right, let's, so I'm going to just weave in the back of this. But before I go buying something, I definitely need to go see if I can unscrew that butcher block top because I think the original table might still be underneath there, but it, they might've glued in the pro That's what I'm scared of, that they might've glued that butcher block top to it. Um, so weaving up here. But yeah, if that's not the case, then I'm definitely, I'm going to have to definitely look into that and get on eBay and, and uh, see what I can, see what I can find for uh, a table. But yeah, so I didn't do the way knot this time. Um, I just wove it in the end. So that saves a little bit of thread. And uh, all right, here we go. Let's start out the next bit here. So all these little fingers will go around in the same way that we that we did the thumb here. Let's see, I don't think we're that far into focus. So all right, here we go. New floss. The first stitch. I'm kind of just going back to where I started to give that double. Um, thickness effect that we get with the stem stitch as if it's like the last half of the last stitch. We are making, it's block 75 already, can you believe it? So it's this cute little hand with the little um, sampler, little piece on the side. Just started, so we're doing, oops, I think I, I pulled that thread kind of funny. I don't think I matched up my threads very well here. But yeah, I just, I just got pulled a little bit. 
All right, there we are. My thread separated a little, one bunched up. Oh, <laughs> that's perfectly fine. Oh, thanks for coming in, Jennifer. Ooh, early morning over there, yeah. As much sleep as possible is good. The oh, World Series time, yep. We used to be kind of big into that, but I haven't done any baseball related anything in a long time. I'm gonna make my stitches a little smaller. I, that last one was kind of big. Oh, we're, um, it's block 75 of the Splendid Sampler quilt along. Um, it's a free pattern right now. Um, so anyone else can make it this as well. It's at thesplendidsampler.com. It's free. So, all right, going around this little fingers again. So I'm gonna use the smaller stitches. I think there might be a trick to doing curves with stem stitch, but like I said, I don't do stem stitch hardly at all. So <laughs> I am, um, this is good practice for me doing the stem stitch. I know some people, um, depending on how big your stitches are, or um, how big of an angle, like you could do angles that are really close this way and then they could spread out and get longer and you can actually control the thin, the thickness and the thinness of your lines uh, because of that. You know, like almost like, I don't know, if you've seen calligraphy, you know how calligraphy sometimes lines can be thicker and sometimes lines can be thinner. You can actually control that with the stem stitch, the thickness or thinness of your lines. And I have not experimented with that hardly at all, um, but I think that'd be a fun thing to try sometime. We should, um, we'll have to do that with, with stem stitch. And if I were to do that for here, I would, I would draw out what my thick lines are and stuff and then, then try that. But like, if I do a longer stitch, like down here, and if I have it close to the line, not far apart, it will be a thinner line than if I'm doing like big angles next to each other, almost like a satin stitch. Um, that's where I will have my, my thicker lines. So that's how you can control the thickness and thinness. Oh, <laughs> Indians are doing well. Oh, step stitch. Oh, for funny. Okay, so this is called a step stitch in, um, in, by you. Oh, where were you? From, in Greece. A stem stitch. Or a step stitch. <laughs> yep, stem stitch here. All right, jumping around that scissors. This hand is so cute. Cute, cute, cute. Oh, you call it a stem stitch. Oh, okay. Yep. Stem stitch. So this is like, I think, um, back, you know, back before embroidery got super popular again, you know, uh, when people were, um, doing doing patterns and stuff like the aunt Martha patterns and all that. Um, the, the stem stitch, I'm going to do a little twisted here. I'm going to just dangle my, my thread. Oh, funny. The piece of Velonia. <laughs> oh, that's cool. But this is, I think the a pretty common, the most common stitch that would be taught and learned and stuff. So this is a tight little curve. I'm gonna get one more little stitch in there. You learn the stitches in fashion school. Oh, that's interesting. Well, that's kind of cool to know. All right, I am not gonna have enough floss to go all the way around here, but we'll, we'll get as far as we can. 
Yeah, I only have this much flax. There's no way I'm getting all the way around all these fingers. So we'll get as far as this will take me, and we will switch threads again. And I think, um, I think after, I think we'll probably call it a night after I finish this thread here. I think it's getting kind of late already. Let me just check my watch or, yeah, I think we'll just, we'll finish up this one. I won't start a whole nother thing. I'll, I'll actually thread it. I'll get it, get it ready to go so we can just hop in right away tomorrow night. Because again, I'm missing Tuesday, so we don't have all the amounts of days to work on this. I think I didn't pull the floss tight enough here. Now, yeah, well. So on Tuesday is my, my painting class, but I only have two more classes left. But then I'll be here all the time again. I think we will eh, just make it around this little finger. And then we'll keep going. So I think we'll just follow the instructions. I'm going to, I think I'm going to stick to stem stitch uh, really for all of this, you know, and then when it's clearly marked as a different stitch, like a, the running stitch here, we'll, we'll do that. We'll switch it up. Um, but yeah, my plan is to just keep picking, um, just grabbing new colors from here. You know, just uh, each each motif, each little element in here could be a different color. So the scissors will be a different color, and the little heart will be a different color, and the ruler will be a different color, but they'll all be blue. <laughs> oh, it's thesplendidsampler.com. And um, like this is block 75, so you'll have 75 of them plus a whole pile of them. Um, bonus blocks that uh, you'll have the option of doing. But yeah, totally pick and choose the embroideries you want to do or whatever. Um, all the blocks, uh, if you go to thesplendidsampler.com, yeah, right there, Cora put it up. Um, there's a label on the top or in the menu bar that says like blocks and bonus blocks or something like that. It's like the second tab, I think. Um, that's where they all live. Just scroll down there and there'll be little images of all of them. I think I, I think that's, eh, we'll get one more tiny stitch in and, uh -oh. I might have pushed my luck there. I think I did. <laughs> I don't think I have enough floss there to weave it in. So let's, oh, and I don't, this is, doesn't even match up. I lost, uh, my thread got bunched up somewhere. So this will be the last stitch. We're just going to go right there and we will pick it up from there. I'm going to weave that in. The next stitch will come up here. Maybe I'll, uh, I'll get the next, uh, next bit started. Circle of love. Which one was, oh, that's the one with the big heart on it, right? We started that one. Um, I think I only had like maybe one, one day of it, of working on that one. Um, so I think I might have been on vacation or something at that time. I can't quite remember. But yeah, that's on my uh, not done piece. Oh, I had to cut out a lot of pieces for the Hearts of Love. Or I think I might be thinking of the wrong block then. All right, I did not leave enough tail that time. Ah. All right, I think we're barely good enough there. Makes like a flower. Hmm. Oh, like the, the heart with the flowers in it? Is that what you're talking about? All right, here's my last uh, two strands. So I'm gonna thread this and weave it in and just get it started. But I think um, we'll just, oh, there's no heart. Okay, then I'm not, oh, is it the one with the birds and the flowers coming out of the the um, the bobbins or the, uh, what are those called, the spools? All right, I'm totally blanking then. Old kitties. Oh, applique. I've done all of the, um, or I've at least started all of the blocks except for 
oh, I don't even know what it's called. It's that one that's kind of like a bear claw, a lot of half square triangles around it. So I'm not, I'm not done with that one yet. Oh, Irene, did, oh, I missed, I missed what, what's happening. Um, so I think I'll get the first couple stitches started here, but then I think we'll call it. That's a weird cut-up piece, is you turn with a flower with a border? A flower with a border. <laughs> I'll have to, um, I'll have to look it up again. I've started them all except for, for one. So in theory, it exists. Oh, cat died this summer. Oh, I'm sorry, that's sad. Oh, but you do, you have two, two other kitties. So we'll get one, we'll get one stitch started here. Poor little kitty cats. Oh, he was 17. Oh, well he was nice and old. <laughs> that was nice that he, he lived that long. Little guy. All right. I think we'll call it there. I might, I'm, uh, yeah, actually, I'm pretty sure I'll probably need to cut more floss, which kind of sucks. I was hoping I'd have just enough to do this hand, but yeah, I'm not going to make it. So I'll have to cut a whole new, new piece. Oh, that's sad. I miss little cute cats. No kitties. Alright. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. That's sad. Poor little guy. Alright, so I'm gonna take this out of the hoop just because uh leaving in leaving it in the hoop. Ooh, I made that tight, holy cow. Leaving that in the hoop um can crease the fabric if you leave it in the hoop for too long. Um, so it's better to just take it out of the hoop after each of your sessions. I'm going to just throw this pin, or not pin, the needle down here. Um, and we'll just let it lay like that till tomorrow. But we got a good start on it. We got a ways to go, but, um, you know, we did that pretty quick. With that, uh, that stem stitch really uh, is slick. You can get stuff done pretty quickly. Um, and it gives it a nice, thick, kind of organic looking line. Um, I'm kind of excited to get doing this heart here. That'll be a different color. Ooh, and we can do the needle a different color, and each one of these motifs can be a different color. Um, I'm excited to start using some of these blues. So, all right, I am going to uh, flip you guys around, and we will call it an evening. Thanks so much for coming in. Hello again. So here we are. Got the little hand started. I'm excited about that. And you know, I didn't just, um, cause I'm thinking about it. I didn't iron this or anything to start out with. We're gonna be handling it so much that it's gonna, you know, it's gonna get all beat up. Um, that's another reason why I have extra fabric around uh, versus being the exact size. Yeah, so I'm using Cosmo embroidery floss, which is, it's part of Lycian. Um, any embroidery floss will do. I just happen to have this really and I have a lot of blues and I wanted to play with blues and that, that's what we're doing with this this block is playing with the blues. So all right this will go up on Penguin and Fish movies right now and I'm excited to keep working on this. It's really kind of fun to do embroidery again. I forgot all about it <laughs> for a little while. So uh, thanks guys for coming in. Uh, I'll be here tomorrow and then the, uh, uh, Tuesday I'll be gone and uh, Wednesday I will be back working on the embroidery again before New Black Thursday. So, all right. Oh, <laughs> good. I'm, I'm glad. Uh, um, hopefully, uh, well, when we get to the sampler side, we'll go through all those stitches. There's a whole pile of fun little stitches on the sampler side of this, this design. So we just got to get through this cute little hand first. So have a great night, guys. See you tomorrow. Bye.